the broader Australian community said this is our, and, and I say the same thing. Now, while I'm not Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, I mean, this is ours. Australian culture, is it our, it's our heritage, it's our history. And, and you know, we're talking about uh, over 46,000 years of history, very, very significant. And so, you know, it's really created a lot of momentum for a demand of change, not only within the, the, the broader Australia, in the Indigenous community, but the broader Australian community, and even around the world, people are just saying this is not good enough to st- destroying these, um, you know, this cultural and, and traditional heritage of people. So that's created a, a, a level of momentum. And so what we're doing, with, uh, and uh, even the mining companies now are saying, wow, you know, we've gone too far, this has got to stop, and they're already changing their practices. Now, when what we've done in this particular... This is the second report. Uh, the first report that we put out was tabled in, uh, uh, I think, on the 9th of December 2020, and that specifically dealt with the destruction of those caves and, and with the uh, action of, of uh, Rio Tinto. There were seven recommendations in that, specifically in relation to the destruction of those caves. This second report, which we've just... Um, uh, released yesterday is effectively where we go from now, a way forward after that. There are eight recommendations in that one. And w- what they're doing mm. is, first of all, we're saying that each state and territory in Australia has different law or different rules in relation to dealing with Indigenous or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander heritage. And so what we're saying is that we need an overarching authority a Commonwealth legislative authority that is if, if anybody that has... Warren, an just, to, the, it, Warren, just to, to interject, the, sorry, apologies, apologies, just to interject, in terms of that then, in terms of that legislative framework, do you think the states in particular, because you do mention Western Australia in the report, were too soft on the miners when it did come to these issues? Well, I mean, absolutely. And this is the reason why we need some, we, we need a single body oversight there. Hopefully, with the with the amendments or the changes that are made that are currently being done with the West Australian legislation, they will address a lot of the concerns that we have, that we haven't had the opportunity of seeing those uh, changes. Uh, they weren't get, the, the draft wasn't presented to the company, but we're just saying that um, whatever they do, because they are so diff- they are different across the states and territory, we need a single body there that can oversee this. If people are not happy with the way they're being treated, they can go to a, uh, to a, a federal, if you like, or a, a Commonwealth body. So that's one of the recommendations that we put up. The other one too, and we've seen this with Jurgen, there was confusion as to where they go, uh, even their legal representatives weren't sure of where they go to raise concerns because some of the responsibility stays with the, uh, with the Environment Department, uh, the Federal Environment Department, some of it's with the State Department right. and some of it's with the uh, Indigenous Australians. And so what we've said is that we need all of this cultural heritage um, uh, legislation to, to fall under the Minister for Indigenous Australians. So that it's a one-stop shop. 